Oh, I knew there was gonna be one right there. Got him. Oh, he's a beauty. Hello, folks. Today we're gonna to be fishing for rainbow trout, just like this guy right here. We're gonna be using a little bit of an unorthodox pattern. We're using soft plastic baits, just like you would use for, I got it all tangled up here, just like you would use for smallmouth bass. Instead of going after smallmouth bass, we're gonna be going after big rainbows like this right here. Stay tuned, I think you're gonna enjoy the show. Let this guy go. There you go, buddy. Angler's Experience is proudly sponsored by Crestliner, leader by innovation. Tobler Marina, your one-stop boat shop. Oxart, your single source supplier. Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. Easy Loader, all boat trailers are not created equal. And Honda Marine, it's all about power. Chunky fish. Beautiful down there in that clear water. That is a chubby fish right there. Buddy, you fell for the old soft plastics today, didn't you? There we go. Look at the girth on that. Back to belly. That fish is thick. I can't even hardly hang on to it. These guys get so big like this, they're not quite as easy to hold on to as say a largemouth bass or a smallmouth, but boy, what a beauty. Excellent fish. We'll get her back in there before we hurt. Folks, the rig we're using here today is real simple. Um, it doesn't cost a lot of money. It's great to bring kids out and use. I love setting kids up with this kind of a technique, but usually when you're doing this, you're fishing for bass. and Like we're doing today, we're going after trout, but it will still work. It's a Gary Yamamoto 4 inch curly tail grub and just a basic 16th ounce bulkhead jig. And all we're doing when we rig it up, running the hook down through the center, keeping it on there as even as you can, pulling it through, and there you go. That's it. Just like you would for smallmouth bass. And these trout will get in here and eat the same baits. And I tell you what, when they're up here like this, it's a blast. Oh. 
Oh, wow. He ain't big, but he sure is Audrey. So much better than catching them on a big trolling rod. A lot more fun. Come here, buddy. Oh, you're pretty. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Get that grub out. You see that corner of his mouth there. Pop it out. Pretty, pretty fish. All right, buddy. Over you go. There you go. Folks, this is the bait we've been using here this morning, and it's the four inch bait. And the sun's come up, and the fish have gotten a little bit of a negative mood, and this is what's been happening to the bait. We haven't been getting any hookups. They've been just coming up and poking at the tail. So a little tip for you. If this starts to happen, all you need to do is just downsize. This is the same manufacturer. It's a Yamamoto. It's a cinnamon color, which the colors not seeming to make much of a difference today, but it's a three-inch bait. A little bit smaller bait, they'll grab a hold of it and actually get the hook. So if you're, if you're having the tail-missing syndrome happening like this, just downsize your bait and you'll see you'll start to pick those fish up. Ooh, ooh. That's a nice fish right there. Oh, that is a big fish, I think. Either that or just bite real hard. Man, look at the size of that fish. Holy smokes. That is a massive rainbow. For this lake, this is a massive rainbow. Oh yeah, that's what rainbow fishing's about right there, folks. Putting a bow in a rod. Look at the size of that fish. Look at there. Oh yeah. Big rainbows on soft plastics, folks. I'm telling you, you can do it. You just got to get out there and try it. Oh, yeah. That is a nice fish. Let's see if we can get him here. Fire. Look at that. There we go. That's what rainbow trout fishing in soft plastics, folks, is all about right here. Got that grub right in the side of his face there. There. Strong, too. Look at that fish. That is a beauty. They don't get any funner than that, I tell you. That just tickles me pink beauty. Alright, let's let her go. There you go, darling. Folks, the wind's starting to pick up here and the strikes have kind of slowed down. We're not hitting many fish and what's happened is the wind is pushing against the line and it's taking this 16th ounce jig head and it's keeping it up shallow. It's only getting down about two or three feet. So what I've done is I've gone to an eighth ounce head. Now an eighth ounce head, we have about 44 degree water temperature. If it was calm out right now, this head would be too heavy, that bait would fall too fast. But because of the wind pressing against your line, it's actually gonna slow the fall of that bait down and it's gonna get it down to the strike zone. So if you're ever out and the wind starts blowing and you, you're not getting the strikes you were before, change your jig head size out, go a little bit heavier because the odds are you're not getting down to the fish anymore. Folks, the technique we're using here, it's nothing complex. All we're doing is running along the shoreline. We're looking for any points, rocks, any kind of structure, just like you would if you were bass fishing. And we're gonna target that structure, cast it out. And all we're doing is just implying a slight twitch to the rod. Now you don't wanna get super crazy with your action because the water's still real cold. 
and these fish are in here chasing sculpins right now as their main prey. And you got to remember, a cold-blooded animal is only going to move as fast as the environment will allow it. So in cold conditions like this, the fish are going to move slow. So all we're doing is just putting little twitches on it. Let it fall, little twitches. Very subtle, very slow, just trying to imitate the sculpin that are swimming down in there in the rocks. And these rainbows are just eating it up. But get out there, find the structure, fish it, and fish it real slow. Even if you're bass fishing this time of year, you got to slow it way down. That's the key to catching fish in the spring. Be patient, fish slow. Nice, nice, nice. Nice rainbow. Nice rainbow. Nice rainbow. Oh, boy, that's twice he jumped. Oh, third jump. All right. Boy, oh boy, that's cool. That is cool. Come here, buddy. Oh, you're all kinds of angry at the world, aren't you? You're not a big, big guy. This little fish. Right through the nostril. That's why he was jumping so hard. They got a lot of nerves right there. What up, bud? There we go. That's a nice crober. Bright, beautiful fish right there. All right, let's go ahead and release him. See you later, buddy. There he goes. Well, folks, I think we found the pot of gold under the rainbow, and that pot of gold is big, nice rainbow trout. Twisting, twisting, twisting. There it goes. Come here, bud. That line all wrapped up in your face there. Boy, that's a chunky little fish there. What a beauty. Oh! Fish was fooling me. Oh, that is a stout fish. Man, check the drag on that one. Oh boy, the size of that fish. Boy, what a beauty this one is. Wow. This is what rainbow fishing, soft plastics in early spring is all about right here. Beauty. That right there, folks, is a beautiful, beautiful rainbow. 
Oh, wow. That fish hit me a couple times on two separate casts before he actually finally grabbed that bait. Get that Yamamoto grub out of your mouth there, bud. That is a beautiful early spring soft plastic rainbow right there, folks. That fish is pushing the 20 inch range. I got pretty big hands, but that's a big, big fish. Beautiful lavenders, and there isn't a trout prettier than that. All right, bud, let's put you back. Oh man. Oh man, that's a beautiful fish. That looks like a little steelhead. Wow. That is a spawning male right there. See the big kite underneath his chin. That's a spawning male. Well, he's got a big old kite underneath his chin here. Put him out, buddy. That's all right. There you go. You can tell that's a male. You wonder how people can tell, especially on a trout. See, he's milking right here. I don't know if you could see that or not, but this fish is actually a spring spawner. That's why he's so dark, and his kite is elongated right here. That's what they call the kipe. We're going to let him back before we hurt him. We don't want to hurt this fish. There you go, buddy. See you later. Oh, oh, man, came back on it, oh, there he is, got him, he came back on it, up here buddy, I'm telling you folks, some of the hottest trout action you can have is in the early spring of the year. You know, if you've been trolling all winter long, dragging leaded line around and you're tired of trolling, you can get out here on your lake and reservoir if you've got big stocks of rainbows in there and you can have a blast. Kids love it. Um, it teaches them really how to become a better bass fisherman because you can throw in there. The trout hit it real hard so they get a feel for it. And they're just fun to catch like this. I'm not a big fan of trolling leaded line, but I do it. But anytime I can, I can come out and I try to catch these rainbows on soft plastics like we're doing today. Let's get this fish back in the water. There you go, buddy. But there you go. Chunky little guy. All right, buddy, let's get you back. There you go. Folks, one of the things that I can tell you just from my personal experience, when you come out to a reservoir lake, like we're fishing a reservoir here today, it's real clear water. 
And with trout, you got to use real subtle colors. Uh, walleye, you would use maybe some real bright reds or some real bright chartreuses. With trout, and especially in clear water environments, you got to use natural colored baits. This is my clear water box here. And as you can see, everything is either a shade of gray, a brown. This is about as mo most drastic as I'll get. This is a root beer colored right here. And if the water's a little bit stained, I can put that on to give a little extra color to the bait. But for the most part, everything is brown, gray, and green. And if you stick to natural colored lures when you're going for rainbows, you'll have a lot better success. Oh, you ate it. There you go. That fish has got some serious belly right there. All right, buddy. Let's let you go. Well, folks, I hate to say it, but it's time to head for home. I always hate this part of the day when I got to fire up the motor and head back to the trailer. But I hope you enjoyed the show today on fishing for rainbows with grubs. You know, it's an alternative fishing method for rainbow that not a lot of people think about. Uh, I hope that you can get out there and give it a try because it is fun and you catch a lot of fish. So as always, thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next week.